Hi, I'm Melanie Dellis. And I am Karen Lacey. And this is Muse Story, where we uncover the unusual histories all around us. So today on Muse Stories, we're going to do part two of our extravagant wedding series. And today is on courtship, part two on courtship. You know, courtship rituals, dating rituals nowadays, have a really interesting and creative history throughout time, up until modern times. And um, it's it's actually pretty cool the way, cool, I don't know if cool, funny, I don't know, the way families get involved, parents and whatnot. I mean, there are some times where parents might get involved a little too much, but it makes for a really good courtship story to tell later on, right? Yeah, that's really true. It's Sometimes parents, you never know what they're going to do if they're your parents, by the way. Um, and it's kind of funny in retrospect, like what they had done to maybe a past girlfriend or a past boyfriend of their child or even um, prospective um, husband, marriage, husband, wife, you know, what, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, anyway, I thought I was, thought it was really funny. But um, I, I had a personal story that something that my father did that I was very... I was actually caught off guard by, you know, I was waiting. Um, my father had not met this boy before. And, um, so I was a little nervous because this was like my first time. My, my dad is really like, this is a boyfriend and we're going somewhere together. Um, kind of thing. Um, I guess he had met them before, but it wasn't like this. Um, so anyway, he, I, you know, we're waiting for him to get there so we can all get in the car and go to the, the party. And he, he comes and he had actually just dyed his hair. He had a dark uh, brown hair, and he had bleached it blonde, like this blonde yellow color. Um, and I was surprised by that. I didn't know that he was doing that. And then, you know, who cares if he is? Um, but that is important to the story later. Anyway, so um, I, introduce, I introduce my dad to this boy. We all get in the car, and we go to this place. So we're kind of, you know, getting all the food ready, you know, hanging out with everybody, you know, listening to music, talking, having a good time. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, my dad's like, oh, um, so-and-so, why don't you come with me? And they drive off in my dad's truck. And I have no clue where they went. Um, I didn't know when they were coming back. And they wouldn't let me go with them. So that's fine. Okay, great. This is weird. Um... So then I was like asking around after a while. I'm like, okay, they'll come back later. Yeah. And then I was at, I remember asking around like, where are they? What's going on? Um, and they're like, oh, I, he's probably grilling, you know, your boyfriend. And, and I don't know what's going on. So eventually they come back and neither one of them told me. I'd ask each one of them individually, like, what do you guys talk about? What happened? Why were you guys gone so long? Like those kind of basic yeah. questions. And they wouldn't answer them. Hmm. at all to this day my father has still not told me what he was in that truck talking to this boyfriend about and uh i thought that was really weird but i i can only in retrospect assume my dad was grilling him just like everyone yeah. was saying he was and then from then on i knew my father didn't like this boy he must have said some things that my dad just didn't like uh. um he called him yellow hair and he's still yellow to this day. Yeah. So if I've ever, like, something's going on, he's like, oh, yeah, I remember that boy, yellow hair. And it, my dad still, still says something random about yellow hair every now and then. It hasn't come up in many, many, many years, but it has happened. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so funny. You know what? You know what is really, it's kind of funny because I, I kind of have a similar story with my dad when I was pretty much the same age. Um, so, something about being a 16-year-old. And yeah, your dad was, starting to look at your boyfriends and be like, what's going on? Right. I was like 15, 16, something like that. It was ninth grade. And I was going to my very first dance. It was the homecoming dance. Mm. And um, so I am from Michigan, just outside of Detroit. And so my family is a very old school Greek Italian family. And my dad's hilarious. Like, <laughs> I think like back then I, I didn't find it so funny, but I find it really funny right now. Yeah. And it makes for a really great story on courtship. So anyway, so this guy, his name was Tom and, um, he comes to my house and he's all, we're all nervous. You know, it's our first dance. We're nervous. He's nervous. He's all shaky and everything. And 
um, I come downstairs and my dad's like, hey, come inside my office. We had like an office off the side of the foyer. So he goes into the office with my dad and he shuts the door, but the doors are glass so I can kind of see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So my dad has him sit down at the chair in front of his desk. My dad sits at his desk and he starts cleaning his gun. <laughs> and he's looking at him going, so what time are you going to have my daughter home? And he was like, that's like the perfect 10 o'clock or whatever he said. And, and my dad was like, what time? And he's nine o'clock. And like, so we, and the guy was, the, the poor kid was scared out of his mind by my big dad. And he was awesome. We go to the dance. The guy didn't dance with me once. He didn't touch me. didn't dance with me. Cause he was too scared. He was too scared to do anything. And I think I was home after like two hours. It was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a classic example of well unusual parenting courtship well, dads and their daughter <laughs> okay but you know what you know it's even though we have all these funny stories it is not quite like maybe in Cambodia <laughs> with the parenting rituals you know how I, they get involved over I actually there. found it very refreshing um, yes, refreshing. It's not something that I would particularly want no. to do with my daughter. It's interesting, though. It is an interesting concept. But it does show it does show a lot of trust, mm -hmm. um, and it forces the daughter to make good decisions. It does. Um, so it, it's it actually I could actually see why it kind of came about. But and we um, are talking about the love hut. Yes, the the love or loving hut. Loving hut. And it's it's really interesting is that is the idea that you actually have your little courtship ritual mm -hmm. like instead of the instead of the um, the young gentleman coming over to your home and everyone hanging out and you having your little conversation on the side and the parents are just sitting there mm -hmm. watching you or some other chaperone or mm -hmm. just sitting there in the same room to make sure no funny business happens. This is actually a separate space. This is actually a separate um, home. Mm -hmm. uh, well, a hut. Um, in which the um, daughter can go take whoever she wants um, and they can do whatever they want. The idea is you trust your child that make, you know, they can really get to know that person without the prying eyes of the parents. And I can actually understand that you really get to know somebody when you get to be with them one-on-one -on -one and they're not right. nervous. Right. I mean, how many times you've been on a date and the person oh is so nervous. So you many actually times. cannot figure out who they are and you're so nervous. Yeah. And it's almost like a misconnection because you're too nervous. I mean, that happened with my husband. He was almost too nervous that I was like, Oh my God, date is done. Yeah. And only because we had concert tickets after dinner did our date get extended. <laughs> and he knows this. He's well aware that because of That's the concert great. tickets and a little bit of alcohol, <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe I actually do like this guy. You needed mm -hmm. a loving hut. Yes. Well, as long as there would have been alcohol. Um, probably. But but I'm assuming like there maybe there's all these different, you know, things you could do in the right. loving hut. Um but yeah, it's part of that ritual. And I, I, I find that actually, like I said, freeing mm -hmm. and trusting um, mm -hmm. of your child to see yeah. what they're going to do, what they're going to say, and who they choose. It's very true. And this is actually, I would say, a better way of going about wooing someone, right? Other than in Taiwan, for example, in, up until the late 1930s. When um, men <laughs> men would go into battle and sever the heads of their enemies in order to bring them to the woman that they were interested in and woo her that way, they he would be like, "Here, honey, look what I have for you." And then be well, like, it shows, "It shows your male prowess. It shows yes. you know it does. It shows that you are capable of protecting it does. her from the enemy." So again, it makes sense. It does make sense. I personally don't want a severed head on my door. No, and they would keep it there. If that was like, my culture, I'd want it. Even after the woman accepted the you know the man. They would not take the heads down. They would put them on the pikes and they would keep them up as like trophies. Could of, you have more than one? Yeah. Oh, no, it would be, so you could have like, you could have like it would be, several heads. It would be several heads. To show it how might cool even, and popular you were. Well, it might even be just one man giving you 12 different heads. So it could be a whole, you know, plethora of heads hmm. in front of your door. It's showing how much he loves you that he's willing yes. to put himself in battle for yeah. you mm -hmm. to bring you and bring you something back. And this was something That's that that um, 
you know, the women really enjoyed and liked, and this was what they were expected to receive. And, and again, if you didn't have a head in front of your I door. I would be really sad. I would be sad, too. I mean, you know. I would be sad. Although, I, I'll be honest, I cannot see my husband going into battle and bring me back ahead. No. <laughs> I, I don't need anyone to bring me a severed head. Just I'm just putting that out there. Like, you no. do not need to woo me that way. Respect it. <laughs> don't need it. For us. <laughs> but it's interesting how, how men offer women different things like little tokens of love and appreciation yeah, when they're wooing them. There are so many different ways there of doing are. that. I mean, are. you know, we talked about, um, you know, the ways that a woman, woman will show that she's interested. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's also ways, other ways besides the sheet that we talked about in the last one, um, and the knife where uh, a man can show that he's interested in one of them. And I can't remember the culture. Maybe you do. Um, but they were, it was called spoons and the, the process mm -hmm. itself was called spooning. Mm -hmm. And it's not spooning like cuddling. It like is you not. Of, it's actually different. making a really beautiful, intricate spoon that you say, I'm interested in you. And I took a whole bunch of time to make you this really elaborate spoon. Right. And here you go. And these spoons are so intricate and elaborate and they have heart that the spoon the, the cup portion of the spoon is shaped like a heart sometimes. They're braided and the handle from one piece of wood. And it is, is like a really amazing art form. You know, I actually feel like I've seen mm -hmm. that in, in um, one of the collections that I worked in. Yeah. But I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was just well, a really pretty kitchen spoon. Well, yeah. And so they are still um, created today. But they're not quite given out as tokens of, of love when you're courting somebody. It's probably more like but something you give them yes. at some point. And it's a token of whatever, love, but not of courtship. Right. Right. They still give it to people. They still make them. But more than now, they're like collectibles and they're um, not so much for courtship anymore. But they're really. That's really cool. Really, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and um, in Europe, and actually a lot of different cultures do this thing where. Um, the men, right before they go to a dance. So in the last, in episode one of Courtship, I, I, I demonstrated apple slices under the armpit. Yes. How women would do that and give the apple slice at the end of the dance. That I was wonder if you would have, sweat. like, an apple under each arm so that if you like two boys, you could, like, Well, I don't, I don't know, you know, Maybe. I mean, why not? Besides, you know, I didn't even think about this during our first episode, but I'm going to bring it up here. I wonder if that would help with B.O. Well, the apple did make me smell nice after I took it out. So that was, that was, that was, so one. it actually kind of makes sense. <laughs> you put an apple under there and you keep your arms. It maybe. But also, how do you dance? You have well, to have one arm free. Well, maybe, but maybe it keeps you like upright too, because you got to keep the apples in there. You don't want to drop your apple. I on the should floor. have demonstrated how to dance with one of those under my armpit. Yeah, but think about it. You actually, time. you actually have to keep your arms right, like close to your body, so but that aren't you don't you drop your apple. To, aren't you supposed to lift your arm around the gentleman? It depends on the dance. I, I guess. Well, I guess you can't. Maybe yeah, it actually that's makes what you. I'm maybe it makes you more chaste. Oh, maybe. But you know what the men started doing is. They would take their handkerchief and they would put it under their armpit. Something about armpits, okay? Maybe because that's where they that's, sweat. That's, the most. that's where you smell the most when you sweat. Maybe? Yeah. So they would take yeah. their handkerchief and at the end of the night, so it's completely soaking wet, full of sweat and stink. Only if you did a lot of dancing and were really active. At yeah. Party. Well, they had a lot of clothes on too. Like they always wore those suits and those long shirts True. and everything like that. So True. I'm sure that they were always sweaty and stinky. They would take this handkerchief and they would go up to the the lady that they would like to woo i love that woo i love that word anyway woo and wooing wooing <laughs> and they and and he would go like so imagine that i have a handkerchief mm -hmm. and i'm like hey i want to woo you and then they would go up to the lady and they would wipe her face with it and it's soaking wet full of your 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 sweat and everything else that's under your armpit so Imagine, like, you don't, this man doesn't know yet if you're interested, okay? And all of a sudden, this guy comes up to you and wipes the sweat off of your face because you've been dancing like a lady. And she doesn't sweat. She glistens, by the way. It's true. We glisten. Okay, and he has got this soaking wet handkerchief now. No. And she can either that gross, say, I'm sorry, no. that's <laughs> disgusting, and slap him away, or she can be like, hit oh, my God, I, I love I'd, so, hit, I'd hit him with my fan if I had one. I'd be like, excuse me, get away from my face. Well, 
So if the supposedly the scent of this man's handkerchief oh. would oh, automatically man. make this woman fall in love with him, that is what they're told. What I mean, I don't think that. By the way. You do not need to woo me <laughs> by taking a, a sweaty handkerchief and wiping my face with it. I don't think I would like that. You know, it actually reminds me, and this is not courting necessarily, but I don't know if you, guys, you remember it, like the Mary Catherine Gall Gallagher on Saturday Night Live. Oh my God. she'd be God, like this, like and she'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh I my God, I totally forgot about that. I, I mean, like... <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to yeah. be like... Oh my god! Before I before I would go to the young lady and be like, here, because I, I I'm sorry, I probably want to only put it up oh, yeah, for like up five cry. seconds and oh, not like maybe like a whole right. like, hour. I, I I don't know. But then again, it goes back to again what we were talking about in the previous episode in terms of pheromones, right. and that you know if if your you know your chemistry is going to meet up those pheromones, they really need to meet up. Yeah. Um, you need to be attracted to that person. Their sweat is not going to bother you as much. Their sweat. And other bodily smells, other scents are other not going to bother you from as your, much. From your body, are not going to. And actually, the French used to call the woman's private areas smells the secret weapon of love. Yeah. So you know, they used to call it the perfume box. The perfume. Box. <laughs> totally different than what we call a perfume perfume box now. Yeah, it's a but, box that you put perfume in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying it was their secret weapon. It might still be. I'm not really sure. I'm not, we should I, we should ask we some should. French people if you are French and listening to this right now, please let us know if this is still a custom because I'm part French and I don't remember that being passed. <laughs> well, you know, and there's actually this kind of brings up. Something else that um, this is kind of going back to something we were talking about earlier. Um, I wanted to mention in terms of parents mm -hmm. and how they had a hand in the courting is um, a lot of times, you know, someone's going to come over to the house of the young lady and be like, hey, I want to hang out with you for like mm -hmm. a little bit. They don't actually go anywhere. They don't go on a date um, in many of these um you know, older rituals. Um, and they, maybe you do at some point. I'm, I'm not sure. But this particular one I found really fascinating. I actually own one. I got it many, many years ago. It's called a courting candle. And I thought it was such a precious idea um, that the father very covertly tells both the man and his daughter what he thinks of this suitor. Um, and that you'll go into the parlor and you light this candle. The candle is on this stand, though, and it's this wrought iron spiral Ooh. and then you have this like wooden piece with like a peg underneath it so if you like the um suitor you would have it wound all the way up to the top so that the candle can be burning the longest oh and if you don't like them then you wind it down and the candle goes out so wait did you did your dad give this to you no i i got it on my own that is cool yeah i thought it was adorable that is really cool. i got it I don't remember if it was Amish, but I feel like I got it in like the Pennsylvania, like Dutch country, which is interesting because they have some of the most secretive courting rituals it, out of all the cultures. Yeah, it might not be them, but I feel like maybe it was adjacent. But I, it, I thought it was really interesting because yeah. the father could then say, "I really like this guy," and he could even, as long as he went in, he could like change the candle out. And if he changed his mind, he could like go up or down with mm, this. With change this, your mind with this candle. I thought that was really adorable because it it's, is. it's kind of one of those where, okay, well I guess dad doesn't like you. So let's make our courting in this moment quick. It right. doesn't mean that the boy can't come over. It doesn't mean that they can't hang out. It just mm -hmm. means that as soon as that candle goes out or is about to go out, you got to go. Well, you know, why don't we end this on, on a different note and talk about uh, another part, more modern um, courting ritual. A lot of people today date mm -hmm. and they move in with each other, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, and I actually found this fascinating article. This was right around the time that um, um, I was dating who would then become my husband. And um, we decided to move in with each other. And I remember having this conversation with my dad and, and my mom. And I remember calling up being like, hey, I'm actually going to move in with this person. I'm not getting engaged right now. I'm, we're going to move in together and see how that how that goes, um, because that's kind of for us was our logical like next step. Mm -hmm. um, and 
what I found this article really fascinating and I, I was prepared to use this in my argument if either one of my parents said anything. Um, but the, anyway, the article was talking about, um, it was this statistical thing about people who live together and the rate of divorce versus staying married. And the idea was it's all in how you enter into that phase of your relationship. Mm. If you go to move in with somebody and you decide, um, and you both agree that you are moving in with someone because this is the step before getting engaged and getting married. Like that is where your path is, your trajectory. Yeah. Then you are more unlikely to marry that person and stay together. But if you move in with somebody without having that conversation, and a lot of times women might have that conversation, but not men or vice versa. But if you don't mutually have that agreement, mm -hmm. whether it be a full on conversation or, or whatever, and you just assume it's there, then you are more than likely, you are more likely to not get married and then get divorced. Interesting. If you, if you don't enter it yeah. in. The other aspect of it, which I found really fascinating, was that sometimes we move in with people that we wouldn't necessarily marry. Mm -hmm. We're extremely picky um, with who we marry, right? But we're not picky with who we move in with. Oh, I am. Well, but this, I am so picky. Well, <laughs> yes, but this was kind of saying that a lot of people sometimes move in together. Yeah. They're together for long periods of time. And then at some point they're like, well, I guess we'll get married because we're together and we're right, still together. Right. And it's convenient. We're yeah. comfortable. And then they get, and then they get divorced. So if you're going to marry this person. You should be having this conversation about what you want out of said marriage or relationship. And you know, you should probably have the conversation about, what you do and do not want in your courtship. Yeah, fairly early like on. Sweaty handkerchiefs in your face. Yeah, I'm or just saying, do or, you want to get married and have kids? Or I don't want to get married and have kids. Or like, severed heads. Or a severed head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or or do you have that dad or that mom who's really crazy? Because that's a conversation you should have pretty early on too. Yeah. Of course, people are really good at hiding crazy, but that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> I digress. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much for, for listening in on us today. We have a new episode of News Stories every Tuesday, so listen for that. And uh, follow us on Instagram, at News Stories, and please subscribe on YouTube. And um, Yeah, and remember, unusual stories are hidden all around us, and mm -hmm. it's up to you or us to really bring those out and talk yeah. about them. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye.